Good day to you all and welcome to Nexus News Network. Today we are privileged to be talking to Dr. Laila Masharia, a Kenyan lawyer, businesswoman, entrepreneur, and angel investor based in Nairobi. Laila, thanks for joining us. And we're excited to talk to you about the state of the Kenyan education system and how in partnership with Nexford University, you plan to positively impact the status quo. So let me kick off by asking you, being a lawyer by education, then as a senior executive and board member of major corporations such as Absa Bank Kenya and Centum Investments, what led you to the education sector? Oh, great. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here and to spend some time with you today. So I'm really passionate about education, and that's one of the reasons why I'm a senior advisor at Nexford and a great fan of this organization. So education is, of course, as you know, life-changing. I'm a big believer in social mobility. I'm a great believer in op opportunity. And the thing with education is that it allows you, no matter who you are, once you have access to it, to really make a difference in your life, to improve your life by getting more knowledge. But if you can your skills to. This allows you to also advance your family's future financially and in other ways. The other thing about education that's wonderful to invest in is that it's a big market opportunity. A lot of people recognize now that skilling is the way that they can advance themselves and their families. And so as an investor, it's a sector that I'm very excited about. But the last thing about it, of course, is social impact. Because of all the reasons that I explained, it's a way that you can do well, but also do good. So education is really the wave of the future. It's also something Thing now that has a real significance for a global stability, political stability. A lot of the conflicts we see globally where, you know, some people describe them as culture wars or, you know, just a lot of strife at the national level. And some of this really has it, its roots in the fact that globalization and technology are changing very quickly. And so we as humans have to reskill very fast in order to remain relevant in the marketplace. And if you don't do that on time, it's very easy to get left behind. And uh, when that happens, of course, you see a lot of the social disconnect that we see sometimes. So education is important for investment. It's really important for social cohesion. It's really important for family welfare and well-being. Absolutely brilliant. I think that makes a lot of sense to us all listening to you. Um, so my second question then is, you've been fortunate enough to be educated at the world's top institutions. So you definitely know how education positively impacts lives. Sadly, though, 90% of Africans don't have access to quality higher education. Why would you say this is and what are you personally hoping to do to address this access challenge? Yes, now this is a real, it's really the reality that um, a lot of young people don't have access to education. This is especially a crisis in Africa. We do know that 42% of the world's young people will be in Africa by 2030. So it's really important to invest in these young people and make sure that we're preparing them for opportunity. Uh, while in many African countries, there might not be enough jobs technically to put these people to work. It's certainly the case that globally, there's a shortage of talent across many different fields, uh, from healthcare to management to tech. In tech, it's actually quite a crisis. Uh, we don't have enough educators. We don't have enough caregivers. So there's really a big opportunity as far as vacancies and people needing the talent. So all we have to do is kill up the people who are in Africa and get them ready to serve the world and be something that I call Africa's gift, right? To really put themselves forward as the brain capital for the world. So it's a pity that uh, many people don't have access from the primary level, high school and definitely university. This is, of course, a result of many things, of many legacies, some of them just being uh, priorities, uh, policy bu budget allocations. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. And the other one, which is a crisis all over the world, is really that our education system and the way that it was designed in previous generations is really not relevant. It's not agile. It's not changing fast enough to respond to the digital age. And this is where I think Nexford has come in, in partnership with, with employers to really look at what is it that employers need and what does it take to have a market relevant education so that we're filling that skills gap, which in turn makes African youth much more relevant and linked into the global economy. Fantastic. You talk about giving Kenyan youth more opportunities in education, but we know that the Kenyan government is reducing scholarship funding, which is making people dig deeper into their pockets to afford their tuition. 
Um, how do you That's think right. this might impact Kenyans looking to get a higher education? Yes, no, you're right, Mark. Across the world, we are seeing public universities come under increasing pressure. Uh, the public budget is dwindling, and so we are seeing a lot of scholarships reducing. And uh, the impact of this in Kenya and elsewhere is really people looking afresh at the prospect and the promise of private education. So looking at education as an investment. So if I'm investing in skills that will help me earn more, that will help me provide better for my family, then I'm willing to look at a more innovative and broad range of options when I consider my higher education. So you will see Kenyans, and this is a trend we're already seeing, really looking at a broad range of different ways to upskill. And also the challenge of keeping their skills current is also something that people who already have credentials are constantly updating. So the dwindling in public funds is not the end of the story. It doesn't mean that we won't be able to educate our people. We'll just have to get much more innovative about thinking, how do we get people the skills they need to be relevant in the workplace? Fantastic. Now, we're all seeing that there is a great demand for online learning as well as online jobs and online uh, positions uh, in companies. Now, Kenya is showing promise with outsourcing and remote jobs growing thanks to good infrastructure, a strong competency based K-12 education system, as well as good English proficiency. Uh, how do you believe remote jobs might impact unemployment in Kenya? I think that this is a huge opportunity for Kenya and for the region at large. The reason I say this is because as I explained, there's a, a dearth of jobs, actual job opportunities in the marketplace in Kenya. Uh, we are a promising, fast-growing economy, but we are 50 million people, of whom a large proportion are very young and are actually looking to educate, right, to educate themselves rather than employ others. And so this says that uh, we will need to look outside uh, Kenya as we look for opportunities. With a great opportunity that has come with the digital age, the fast internet, 5G, in some cases, uh, the fact that it, most people have smartphones now across the continent or a growing number of people have smartphones now across the continent. This really gives us an unprecedented opportunity to prepare young Africans and young Kenyans for the future of work, which really means online work for clients all across the world. Uh, this is a very exciting opportunity. In the past, we used to worry about brain drain, that people serving uh, or putting their talent to work in the global marketplace or somehow taking away from Africa and taking the intellectual capital from Africa. But now with online work, you get to be in your community and serve clients all over the world, but bring those dollars back home uh, where you can invest them in your community. So it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity moving from brain drain to what we now call brain capital. Well, as or a, brain uh, experts. <laughs> Great experts. <laughs> well, well, as a fellow African, we want to see Africans contributing to Africa in Africa. So uh, we want to exactly. keep them where they are, I, I guess, but keep, expose them to global opportunities. But, you know, we, we talk in economics about supply and demand, and there is a lot of demand for higher education in Kenya, but sadly a shortage of affordable universities. Um, is this the main reason for you joining Nextfit as a senior advisor? And where are the other motivating factors for you joining? One of the things that I find most inspiring is the amount of rigor that has gone into the research behind the learning model at Nexford University. When the research was being done to design the Nexford product, they looked at 30 million job vacancies. We also talked to employers who are employing more than 2.5 million employees and try to understand what were their priorities and what were their needs. And out of that came a matching solution that was really looking at competency-based learning. What does this mean? It's really preparing students for the skill sets that employers really need. And this has a double impact. On one side, the employer gets exactly the skill set that they're looking for, and the, because the employee then has a very short period to becoming relevant and adding value in the workplace. But on the student side, it really makes them more marketable. It also gives them a measure of professional confidence where they come into the interview and into their first day on the job ready to add value and feel really excited about what, what abilities they are, they are able to offer to their employer. Now, you touched on competency-based education, and Nexford is often referred to as a next-generation university where learners no longer need to choose between qualifications and practical skills. In your experience working with leading Kenyan employers, how has their thinking about the value of a university degree versus just skills evolved? Um, so this is a long topic, a big discussion, but uh, we've spent a lot of time talking to employers. And... Uh, 
One of the things that is happening is that uh, employers are being very clear about what the skills gap is. So on one hand, we have technical skills that are lacking and uh, even people with university degrees in some cases are not convincing employers um, that they're able to deliver on that promise. We also hear employers lamenting about digital skills. Uh, we hear them talking about soft skills all of these different things and soft skills being that kind of 20, 21st century uh, set of skills that we talk about. Now, when we put all of this together, it means that employers are still not really getting the value that they were expecting and a university degree is losing its power as a signal. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the university education. All we need to do is revamp it, modernize it and make sure that it's competency based, like we talked about, that it's embedded in the future of learning and the future of work, which is digital. So the idea of preparing students from day one for online work within their community and beyond, all of these are features which we can pile onto the existing education system, uh, make it really modular so that students are then able to adjust their learning paths and their career paths to whatever it is the market need is at that time, especially with technology shifting so quickly. And some of these are to respond to some of the pain points we've been hearing about from employers for some decades now. And so these are the ways in which we're trying to make that university education be a more reliable signal for employers and for them to really see that a certain kind of credential really speaks to a certain kind of skills because we've tested the competencies at every level of that education. Really understood then thanks for that explanation now i think you have touched a lot on about the fact that employers are getting frustrated by the fact that they're not able to find entry-level talent that have the skills required to hit the ground running in a job so to address that particular problem nextford launched an offering called learn to earn in 2022 uh, specifically designed to help employers find this qualified entry-level talent um, learn to earn is meant to solve the challenge employers face around having to spend many months retraining entry-level talent because what they learned in university isn't so relevant anymore. Have you witnessed this challenge in Kenya and how do you believe employers are currently tackling it? Yes, this is a problem that has not yet been solved. It's a very common problem um, and this has to do with the poor quality of uh, entry-level talent. Um, the result in some cases is that employers shy away from hiring people who are straight out of school because they're badly prepared. And you'll have a lot of employers in Kenya articulating that they have a lot of unfilled positions and they're really dissatisfied with, with this problem. Uh, sometimes they wait until uh, those young people are trained by other peers or competitors and then go for them after that. In the tech field, it's a very big crisis where um, everybody feels that there's a, a very big cohort of very green young people um, that really can't add value in the marketplace. So Employers are looking for different ways to deal with it, but it continues to be a very frequently articulated pain point for them. What Learn to Earn does is that it allows an employer to approach Nextford from the outset and get a built to suit solution for their talent. So they come to Nextford and they explain, this is what we need. We've studied our workplace. These are the skills we need right now. These are the ones we need, you know, two years from now, five years from now, eight years from now. And then when they do that, the Nextford then, of course, recruits talent and the employer is able to track the students who are on the path and the career path and the study path that they had identified. This allows them to then on the back end be able to then absorb these students straight out of school. And if they want to be able to hire them and start holding them up while they're still in school in preparation for the day that they might join that employer. So it's a solution that we can offer employers by helping them choose the kind of talent they want, design career paths alongside with us, and then have us nurture that challenge in time to join the employer at the end. Very interesting food for thought for our viewers out there, I'm sure. Now, Doctor, I think that next we pride ourselves on being a can-do attitude company where other people see problems, we see solutions. And, you know, there are challenges, as you said, about the Kenya's youth who are facing, you know, traditional local university challenges. Um, which of them do you think Nexus offerings might address these challenges? 
Well, there's, a, there's quite a few challenges, um, some of which the universities are trying to address, but some of which have ended up being quite intractable. So one of them is the sheer level of congestion, especially in public universities. So it's very difficult to feel like you're getting the attention of your professor, that you're really getting uh, the assessments and the feedback that you need in real time that allows you to calibrate your learning uh, according to the career path that you've chosen. So Nextford allows you through our flexible online and blended learning to be able to go to get the support that you need to get a, a highly ranked professor paying attention to you and to be seen. At the same time, in that very large population, sometimes in some universities, it's very difficult to build a community. Here at uh, Nexford, we make sure that it's cohort-based learning, even though it's online, and it allows you to build a community and grow together with your peers. Uh, the other thing, of course, that we've discussed already is that competency-based learning. So a lot of universities for regulatory and other purposes are not able to be as agile as we are. Um, we have designed our learning together with employers. We have a very strong network that leads to placement at higher rates than average. And so this allows you to be able to feel that confidence that comes from knowing that you've mastered the work, you've mastered the skills and you're able to apply them to work on day one. That's a very big uh, advantage. And of course, this is an international and global credential if you go to university with Nexford and that too is a great signal on your CV and on your resume that sets you apart from some of your competitors. I think there's one word that anyone could take out of this interview is the word skills. So, uh, you know, 2022 is a busy year for Nexford because it also launched its Global Grid initiative, uh, which was yet another step designed to equip learners with the skills they require to access global remote jobs, regardless of their age, gender, ethnicity or physical location. How do you think the Global Grid might help tackle unemployment in Kenya? And are parents really ready to accept their kids learning and working from home? So those are two great questions. I think first, it's really important for all of us to internalize that online work is the future of work. Uh, by 2028, 73% of all departments, according to studies, say that they'll have remote workers. 62% uh, of companies are planning for more remote work. And so this is telling us that this is the wave of the future. And while it's something we're all adjusting to, it's really important for us to embrace and start preparing for this as the way our careers will look in the future. Um, so Kenya's uh, opportunity is really, as we said, to start skilling up its young people and for you as an individual to start reskilling yourself ready for online work. I think parents might be resistant, especially uh, in, the, in the outset, because this is a new way of approaching education. However, there is a very large opportunity. I think the COVID-19 pandemic, one of its gifts unexpectedly was really to help people internalize the importance of the knowledge economy, the importance of brain capital now, and that you can export your knowledge to any country in the world, and a job can be anywhere in the world. And so I think while in before the pandemic, there was really quite some resistance in some quarters to this reality, a lot of us across the world are now really accepting that this is the future wave of what work will look like, of what relationships will look like, of what commerce will look like. Um, so I think we'll see a lot of people coming along, especially as they see the results and the success of people who have taken this path. Absolutely. I guess it's a case in point of seeing is believing. So the more learners that succeed, Kenyan learners that succeed at, at next, the, the more this resistance barrier will continue to crumble, I guess. That's so exactly right. That's yeah. an interesting prospect. So, you know, um, we you talked about a lot about competency-based education, and it's something that differentiates Nexus from traditional universities who tend to teach just uh, theory over skills. But in what ways, what other ways would you say the Nexus University offering is different from other offerings that already exist in Kenya? Yes, I, I think we didn't get a much, as much as we should have into the global grid. So this initiative is really designed to offer mentorship to people who are our students and even some who are outside. So it's a very comprehensive initiative that on one hand is doing mentorship for pe that is only accessible to people within Nexford University, but there's also some public webinars and other outreach initiatives really to start giving back to the community and helping people understand that the future of is really online work and that there's different ways in which uh, we can help you prepare yourself for this reality. So the Global Grid has a network of international mentors, very accomplished, who are here to help 
our constituents, both our students and our greater community, really have hand-holding as they prepare to understand what are the opportunities for online work and what are some of the skills and platforms that they can use to access these opportunities. I guess as the techies would say, online is where it's at, so it's definitely the way forward, that's for sure. And we've seen that the model is working everywhere else. But just on to, on just to touch on something a bit on that point, you've experienced the higher ed American education model. Uh, but what would you characterize as the main difference between US higher ed and other educational systems, specifically, I guess, in Africa and in Kenya? I'm a big fan of the US education system. Um, for me, it was a great um, and liberating and empowering experience. Um, part of it is this re real emphasis on a liberal education and making sure that you have a very good foundation in general knowledge, in understanding the basics of economics, say, or psychology, or women's studies, which we were required to do. So you have to have a broad base. It really also invests and insists on you having an understanding of, you know, Affair, current affairs and, and issues. So for example, environmentalism or climate change, some of these things that we're grappling with, as well as a basic foundation in international affairs. So once it's uh, created this foundation of what you would call a global citizen, then only then are you then um, encouraged to start specializing. This is very different from some methods where, you know, from the time you're 12 years old, they're kind of tracking you either as a scientist or as an artist or and really channeling you towards a career in the future, often before you even know yourself. And that model might have worked at a time when the opportunities in the economy globally were very static and weren't changing very fast. But presently, uh, that model that is the American education system that gives you time to be agile, gives you a firm foundation, but then allows you to pivot as you get to know yourself better and as opportunities emerge is much better suited for the world of today where there's all kinds of challenges coming. There's a lot of volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity. Um, so you really have to be in a position where you're agile. That's one of the great things about the education. There was also a lot of um, liberal um, opportunities for you to um, understand different talents and tap into different sides of yourself. And that's something too that I found very helpful and liberating. We spoke about a couple of questions ago about the skepticism of parents with regards to sending their children to do online learning. If you had a particular parent standing right in front of you right now, what would you say to them to allay those fears? Uh, if I had a parent in front of me, I think uh, what I would say to Kenyan parents today is really to embrace the reality of the future. You really want to prepare your child and your family for the future of work, the future of relationships, the future of e-commerce. And the way to do that is to embrace the digital world. We all saw during the pandemic that those who had digital skills did better. They were much more resilient. Some of them were quite unaffected uh, economically and in their jobs because they were digital. So it's time to start embracing this, to start reskilling for this. It's not just for the children, even as an adult and as a parent. It's time to embrace the idea that you're reskilling all the time and to embrace the idea of modular learning as well. Because as you move forward, there's a saying in Kenya that used to be there that you clear education. Once you've done high school, you're done. Or once you've done university, you're done. But that's not how the world works now. You're always learning. You're always going back to school. And you have a flexible path that really responds to whatever it is your employer or your home life or your business needs, your individual business. That's what I would say to Kenyan parents. Yeah, brilliant. You actually touched on lifelong learning there, and I think that's something that we talk a lot about. We have to have some mature students that are learning at next for the university, and I think that's something you know that a lot of people need to be cognizant of. As you said, it's not your learning doesn't end when you think it ends. It's a constant curve, and you constantly need to be upskilling yourself. So uh, that's something that we are very hot on, a topic that we're very hot on here at the university. Um, so I guess last but not least, there's uh, a big question in closing. So. Uh, and if you um, had a message to share with Kenyans thinking about learning online, what would that be? When you think about learning online, I think it's important for Kenyans to be open minded. I think it's important to embrace this as the wave of the future. I say this because of all the statistics that now show us that 
work is also going to be increasingly online. A very large percentage of companies now across the world are saying that they'll be relying more and more on online workers. We already know that a lot of young people in Kenya are selling their skills already overseas. This is allowing them to earn in uh, other currencies. Uh, it allows them to get the best value for per hour for their brains, which we as parents have invested in. So it's really important for us to look at the online space, embrace it for learning, but also expect it to be the source of a lot of our job opportunities in the future. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's something not to miss and something to embrace. This could really be the answer that a lot of us are looking for as far as unlocking the potential, not just of us individually, but for our families and for our nation. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I think we've come to the end of our interview today. So all that's left to say is, uh, Doctor, thanks very much for joining us today and giving up your valuable time. And um, we really do look forward to seeing your input at Next University and how it will start making a difference um, in putting higher education in the hands of more Kenyans. So thanks again for joining us today. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thank all you. All right. Thank you. And goodbye all. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.